Hi there, Aaron here, and let's talk about the Game Boy Zero. This is my latest fun project that I decided to build. Um, I built Raspberry Pis and like Link Shell and some other things, but I really like the idea of this Game Boy Zero. Um, that idea was actually first kind of brought to the world by a guy named Wormy, who started a uh, website called pseudomod.com, which is a huge forum for building these things. And it's a fantastic set of resources, so I highly recommend you go check it out if you want to build your own one of these. But uh, really what a Game Boy Zero is, is it is a Nintendo Game Boy shell with inside of it a Raspberry Pi Zero um, single board computer. And that allows you to run Emulation Station, which is a uh, set of programs that allow you to emulate any of the old retro gaming consoles. So you basically have a portable uh, system that you can play lots of any systems, you know, like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, etc. I mean, it really covers a lot of systems. Uh, this project, what I really wanted to do was build one, and I didn't want to use any original parts. Um, I didn't want to murder an original Game Boy, so these are all aftermarket reproductions. Like, this is a, you know, a Chinese-built reproduction Game Boy shell. This is a uh, clear uh, glass screen protector actually it's it's bigger than you know the original screen because we have a, a three and a half inch lcd inside there and this uh, protector is built by a company named uh, kitch bent and i've got some extra you know x and y buttons um and then on the back i've got some uh, rear shoulder buttons i have a a uh, you know a fake cartridge shell in a with a cool little sticker made by a guy named dominator on the forums and then inside the uh, battery door i've got a uh 5,500 milliamp, uh, you know, lithium ion battery, and then kind of just printed up a little mock sticker that eventually I would need to make a real sticker for it. But there's a guy, uh, on the forums who, who made this sticker, but the, the battery is supplied by a guy on the forums named Dextech. So again, on the forums, everybody's got a contribution and they all come together to uh, make, you know, whatever build you want to do and whatever your goals are. My goal was, I want it to be easy, fun, and to be pretty professional. I didn't want to have to cut into a lot of things. I didn't want tons of wires running everywhere. Um, it'd be nice to take it through the TSA and not look like this is some sort of crazy contraption. And it has passed that. So on the sides, let's take a look. We've got the uh, you know original volume control. In the external connector, we actually have a full-size USB port. Um, no modifications done on this side. In the other side, we have a uh, micro SD card in the uh, contrast port which you can eject. And then uh, this is an actual cut in the case for the uh, micro USB, which this is your charging jack. And then in the original uh, charging port right here, you have a just a little tactical or tact switch. And that uh, is a kind of a shift button or a function button. And that allows the, uh, the circuit board inside to do some different features. And Let's see, yep, on the back, like I said, I already had the back buttons. I kind of covered all this. You still have the original headphone jack. And that works. And then you also have a uh, you know speaker in there. And actually you have a, a original Game Boy speaker in there. So what's in the inside, before I show you what's going on with you know it actually working, is this is what makes the whole thing possible inside. I'm using Kite's super all-in-one board. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to do this. Some people have smaller all-in-one boards that just have the buttons. Some people just wire up their own stuff, hack up an original Game Boy. Um, I like this board because several reasons it basically has everything on it and it has lots of connectors to plug everything into and makes it really easy to disassemble this thing for uh, service if you want to get in and out of it but it literally has everything on it so the first step is you solder your raspberry pi zero on to the board which is you can see i'm building another one here so this is already done it relocates the sd card right there uh, you got your battery connector here some status leds up top um, on the back side, we have uh, down here, you know, you've got your audio amplifier chip. It, it has a USB hub built in. This has uh, all the charging and power boost circuitry and a safe shutdown, so that way when you flip the power switch off, you don't actually just turn off your uh, system immediately. It takes a few seconds and does an actual safe shutdown in Linux. The reason why you want that is because Raspberry Pi runs on Linux. Linux doesn't like yanking the power out. Eventually, you'll corrupt your SD card, and then... You, you're reinstalling your operating system on your games and everything, and it's a pain in the butt. And plus, most people honestly don't understand that, so it's just easy to have something that when you flip the power off, it does a safe shutdown. Of course, if it hangs during the safe shutdown or if there's a problem, you can always turn the power switch off and press this button on the side, and we'll do an actual hard power down 
That way you can power down in case there's any kind of a, a emergency. Probably one of the really coolest features of this board though is that it has a slot for a uh, an LCD. And in fact, it comes with an LCD. It comes with a three and a half inch, 320 by 240 LCD that's really brilliant. And uh, it's, it's much better than composite. They run it in what's called the DPI interface. And that's pretty much just like mirroring the HDMI to this. So it's not composite, it's much sharper. And that's another reason why I went ahead and did this. The downside to this current revision though is that you can only run the internal screen. You can't use the external HDMI at the same time, but um, he's fixing that in the next revision or with some software to where you can mirror this screen out HDMI and then have both. So that'll solve what a lot of people kind of think, well, it'd be nice to have HDMI out so I can plug this into my TV. I didn't care. I have another Raspberry Pi 3 for that. I just wanted a portable. So let's talk some more about the other parts. This battery by Dextech. This thing says it's 6,000 milliamps. They've tested it, I think, to about 5,500. But as you can see, that's what's inside this thing. It's uh, quite big, but it fits perfectly. You just have to shave down the battery compartment. Uh, I get about 10 hours of runtime on that thing. Um, then some 3D printed parts to make everything work. This uh, bracket for holding the screen and adding the extra XMI buttons by a guy named Hui Hu. And this has some standoff posts, which I melted in some uh, brass standoffs and I have machine screws. So on the back, these four original screws right here, screw right into that post, those posts and hold everything together. You just glue this into the case with your LCD already in there. And then for the back buttons, I use this thing by a guy named Cast and it's just another set of button wells and you, uh, you know, put your buttons in there, some silicone pads and some little PCBs that you get from uh, Kitch Bent, the same company that makes this glass protector and that gives you your back buttons. So let's go ahead and just power this thing up. Now the big thing of course is it runs Linux so it takes a while to boot, about 45-50 seconds so that will make this video a little bit longer but that's okay. So the first thing you see is it's it's kind of doing its little, you know, standard Linux boot up, checking everything. And then once it gets to a certain point here, it'll kick off a splash screen and uh, initialize a few things. But this is a splash screen I found on the internet. It's just kind of a Marvel style intro to uh, RetroPie and just showing all the different games, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, one of the cool things that Kite's done on... Uh, Actually, I should kind of cover that. Kite, who built this board, also made a uh, image for the Raspberry Pi that has all of some things built in, which includes a nice little overlay for the battery so you know exactly where your battery's at when you're playing games. And so that's, that's nice. When that thing gets low, it will automatically warn you and shut down, but it's nice just to keep a tabs on that battery. Um, and here you are, and this is an emulation station theme that uh, somebody came up with in the forums. And, you know, let's go ahead and... And you can go ahead and look at any of your normal games here, like in Super Nintendo. You've got all these different games. And then the screen art that I've scraped. But I keep, you know, a few in favorites to make it easy. And you can go ahead and just fire one up. Like an old Super Metroid. And I have a little loading screen instead of the little Linux box that normally comes in there, or the text box. But as you can see, it works, and it, you know the screen doesn't do it, or the camera doesn't do the screen justice. But it, it's it's pretty amazing. And then uh, you can start and select, go back to your menu, and you can select other things that you know you might play. I I only have a few Super Nintendo games in here. I haven't populated this, but yeah, you can play other games too. Like if you want to play uh, actual Game Boy games. Which is kind of fun to do because it is a, you know, a Game Boy after all. Ooh, asteroids! Should get my little Game Boy loading screen there. Oops, going out of focus. Yep, and you get the nice emulated green screen. So that is just kind of a quick overview of, of my uh, Game Boy Zero, and I'd have to say I, I love this thing. It's fantastic. It, most people think it's a real Game Boy at first glance until they see that you can play anything, and honestly, this board, these parts, 
it's about two hundred dollars to build one of these because um, this board alone is almost a hundred dollars shipped to the U.S. But that includes your LCD. That includes all these parts. I think you get close to building. You know, by by piecemealing it, you get close um, to that same price. But you wouldn't have the uh, you know the professionalism that you get with this board and and just the stability. Because honestly, once everything's in there, it's really easy to assemble and disassemble, and nothing seems to break or be glitchy. And uh, like I said, you can shut it down. Just Flip the power switch, wait a few seconds, and then it goes ahead and does a safe shutdown and turns the system off. And there you go. So there you have it. That is my Game Boy Zero, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I really enjoyed building this. I'm going to build another one. Um, but uh, I can't wait till he, the kite comes out with some more boards that use the Raspberry Pi 3, maybe has a higher resolution LCD. There's always stuff going on. So again, check out that pseudo mod forum. And, uh, you know, like I said, lots of credit to all these guys that build all these parts. It makes this so easy and so much fun to build.